Okay, so this is a special presentation. It's a Zoom special. It looks a lot better uh, now because I can actually show you the slides. But this is a very interesting subject, very different than what we usually do, but it is, I think, still worthwhile. We are on the cusp of the festival of Shavuos. Of course, the festival of Shavuot is the time that we receive the Torah. It is the anniversary of the Sinai experience that happened 3,332 years ago. So it's one year away from 3333, which is easy to remember. 3332 years ago, according to the Jewish calendar. And of course, at Sinai, the Jewish people received the Ten Commandments. And after that, Moshe goes up to heaven and he is there to get the tablets and to get the Torah. And he spends 40 days there and he comes back after 40 days. And the Jewish people are going to the golden calf. He takes the first set of tablets, he destroys them, goes back a second time, goes back a third time, comes back with the tablets. Set, round two, 2.0, and we have the tablets and we get the Torah and that's Yom Kippur and then we start building the tabernacle. We know the story. But I want to begin with a question. What did it say on the tablets? Now, we know the Torah itself says what it says on the tablets. The Torah sa says that it says on the tablets, the Ten Commandments. My question is specifically about commandment number four, which says, and if you see my, uh, my cursor here, my, my, um, you can see it, right? You can see my, my mouse. So if you look at the book of Exodus, where the story of the Ten Commandments is told, the fourth commandment reads, Zachar es yom ha-Shabbos l'kadsho. Remember the day of Shabbos to sanctify it. In Deuteronomy, the Ten Commandments are repeated, and there it says a different word. It doesn't say, Zachar es yom ha-Shabbos l'kadsho. Remember the day of Shabbos to sanctify it. It says, Shamar es yom ha-Shabbos l'kadsho. Guard preserve, observe the Shabbos to sanctify it. Now Rashi already quotes the Talmud. And Rashi says that at Sinai, the Almighty said something that humans cannot say. And the Almighty said something that humans cannot hear. The Almighty said the word Zachar and the word Shamar with one utterance. The word Zachar and the word Shamar came together. That's what Rashi says. That's what the Talmud says. Zachar v'shamar b'dibur echanemru. The word zachar, the word shamar, were said in one statement, in one utterance, what a human cannot say and what a human cannot hear. That was a sign of experience. It was a transcendental experience. But my question persists. Okay, the Almighty said zachar and shamar together. But Moshe comes down with the tablets. The first tablets he smashes. Okay, so what, but the second tablets he doesn't smash. And they are part of the heritage of the Jewish people for more than a thousand years and they're still around somewhere. If we were to find the tablets, we, we could read them. It's written in Hebrew. Does it say the word Zahar? Or does it say the word Shamar? Which one does it say? They're different words. Yes, the Almighty said them all at once. Okay, I, I, I buy that. But which one of them did it say on the tablets? It can't say both. That's the question. Now, our nation is given a name Israel. Of course, Jacob was called Jacob, and he is renamed, he's rechristened, if you will, Israel by the angel and subsequently by God, and that became the name of the Jewish people. Our nation, we call the people of Israel, the nation of Israel. In the Kabbalistic sources, we're told that the word Israel is actually an acronym. It stands for something. What does it stand for? Yesh Shishim Riboy Osios Torah. The word Yisrael, if you take the Yud from Yisrael, it's for the word Yesh. And the Shin is for the word Shishim. And the word Resh, Ribui. And the Aleph for Osius, Laman for La Torah. What does this mean? So this means there are 600,000 letters in the Torah. Yesh, there are. Shishim, Ribu, 600,000 Osios letters, La Torah in the Torah. And that is found in the Zohar. That is found in Kabbalistic literature. The Jewish people 
they, that stands for, there are 600,000 letters in the Torah. What's the problem? How many letters are actually in the Torah? If you were to begin counting letters in the Torah, you start from Bereshis, and you count Beis, Resh, Aleph, Shin, Yud, Saf, Bereshis. Okay, we got six letters. Bara, okay, three more letters. Count from the beginning of the Torah, from the beginning of Genesis, all the way to the end of Genesis, and all the way to Exodus, and Leviticus, and Numbers, and Deuteronomy, all the way to Le'en and Kol Yisrael. This is the number you'll find. 304,805 letters in the Torah. Not more, not less. Where are the missing 295,195 letters? We're told scintillatingly clearly that there's 600,000 letters in the Torah. In fact, the Midrash tells us that Moses was told to go count the Jewish people. And each Jew gives a coin. And Moshe counts up all the coins, and there's exactly 600,000 coins. And then he counts up the letters of the Torah, and there's exactly 600,000 letters of the Torah. Problem is, we have the exact same Torah. At least that's what I was taught, right? We have the same Torah. Yet, we count the letters of our Torah and we find a very, very different number, radically different number, about half. We have about half of the number that we were promised. That's what we were given. We were promised 800,000 letters and all we got was 304,805 letters. Where are the missing letters? So this is a question that is addressed by many, many commentators. Everyone is grappling with the same problem that we have. It's a major problem. We're told clearly the 600,000 letters, and we count them, and there's basically half. And there's a variety of answers that are given. One of the answers, for example, is that, well, when you count Torah, Torah is not just the black ink corresponding to the letters. It's actually the white space upon which the letters were written. In fact, and we've spoken about this in the past, Torah, before it was given to the Jewish people, it was in heaven with God, but it was black fire on top of white fire. That's what we're told, black fire on top of white fire. The Torah is a combination of the black letters and the white parchment upon which the black letters are written. And therefore, maybe this is one answer that's, that's been given. Maybe if you count the white as well, and you know how to count the white letters or the white spaces upon which letters are written, that, that makes up the difference. That's one idea. A second idea is that you have to count the Targum. The Targum is the officially sanctioned translation of the Torah, written, of course, by Unculus, Unculus the convert. He translated the Torah into Aramaic. If you look at any book of the Torah, I have one here in front of me, you'll see it has the Hebrew, and then invariably on the inner margins, it'll have the Targum, the Unculus translation of the Torah. So maybe a second answer speculates. It's not just the Torah itself, it's also the Targum as well. A third answer is that, well, you read it, and then you say it, and the Torah was given to us in two formats, both as one as, as a way of reading it and one as a way of saying it, and there are some words that contain letters that you don't pronounce, and therefore, if you combine the reading and the, and the writing, or the, the reading and the saying, you end up with the magical 600,000 number. Uh, fourth answer talks about the letters of the alphabet. This is a very controversial answer because no one seems to understand it. It's quoted by one of the great sages of your, the grandfather of the Chida, Rabbi Avram Azulai. He says, well, you're not counting the letters of the Torah. You count the letters of the Alephet, the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. But if you know how to count those letters and you count them using all the capitalistic permutations, you'll end up with 600,000. Others add the vowels. Others add the unwritten vowels. But everyone is grappling with this question. We are told, we are promised that we have 600,000 letters and all we have, we count them all up, all we're left with is much, much less 304,805 letters. I'm gonna share with you one of the answers that are given and we're gonna explain it in a very cool way. So here we have in front of you five different letters in the Hebrew alphabet. If you're familiar with the Hebrew alphabet, you have an Aleph, and this is called a tzaddik or a tzaddi. This is a yud, this is a vav, and this is a nun. These are some of the letters in, in the alphabet. So one of the commentators, uh, primarily the Levush, Levush is one of the great sages 
uh, of your, one of the halachic uh, voluminous writers of your. When he's talking about how to write letters, he tells us that some letters are actually composite letters, meaning they're made up of other letters. So for example, if you look at an Aleph, first letter, it could be viewed, see this, this diagonal line, this diagonal spine, could be viewed as a Vav, like a straight line basically, just lying kind of diagonally. And this on top of the Vav could be viewed as little Yud. You take a Yud, put it on top of it, and you take another Yud and put it on the bottom of it. So the Aleph is actually a combination of three other letters, the Vav going horizontally, or going diagonally, and the, uh, the Yud on top and the Yud on the bottom. That's one idea. So look at the Tzaddik here. And this, by the way, the, this idea of the Tzaddik is told us in the Talmud. The Talmud already says this. The Tzaddik says the Talmud is really a Nun. This is a Nun. See this Nun? But the Nun, which is bending over. See this? This is a Nun. This is the same letter. But if you were to take the Nun and make it bending over, you'll have the, the base of the Tzaddik, and then you put another Yud on top of it. So the Aleph is a combo letter. It's a, it's a composite letter. It's made up of three letters, the Vav, the Yud, and the Yud. And the Tzaddik, for example, is another letter, which is the Nun, and then the Yud on top. And by the way, the word, um, the, the name of this letter is Tzaddik. What does Tzaddik mean? Tzaddik means righteous one. So the commentaries tell us, and this is already ancient commentaries, that the reason why this particular letter, out of all the 22 letters, is called the Tzaddik, is called the righteous one, because a Yud represents a Yid, a Jew. And the Tzaddik is someone who bends down to carry a Yud on their shoulder, to carry a Jew on their shoulder. Alternatively, the Yud is often presented as a representation of God. And therefore, maybe the Tzaddik is someone who bends down and crouches down to carry, so to speak, the mission of God on their shoulder. And therefore, someone who does that, someone who carries God, carries their fellow man, that's a Tzaddik, that's a righteous person. And if you look at the Aleph, the Aleph also has a Yud on its shoulder, and it's carrying a Yud, so to speak, but it's also trampling over another Yud. So it's, it, it has one Yud above it, but one Yud below it, and therefore that, this can't be called a Tzaddik. Because a tonic is only someone who carries others on their shoulder and doesn't carry, uh, doesn't trample, so to speak, over any other letters. Now, according to this insight, maybe we could suggest the following. Every time it says that word, the Aleph in the Torah, oops, oops let's, let's go back, I don't do that. Every time it says Aleph in the Torah, yes, it's one letter, but on a certain level, it's actually made up of three different letters. It's got the Yud on top and the Vav in the middle, and the Yod on top, and the Yod on the bottom. So it's really, it really counts for three. A Tzaddik, similarly, it, actually, every time there's a Tzaddik in the Torah, it equals, it equals two. You have the Nun, which is crouching, and then you got the Yod on top of the Nun. Okay, well, how many letters do we have in the Torah? We said 304,805 letters, but of course, they're not all the same. There is a distribution of various letters. So, for example, here, we have um, the letter Aleph, there's 27,057 instances where the letter Aleph appears. Uh, Bays is a little bit less frequent. Gimel is very infrequent. Dalit is, you know, 7,000. Hey, it's, you know, one of the most. One of the most uh, frequently appeared letter, appearing letters in the Torah is, is, is the letter Hey. The letter Vav, over 30,000. Yud, more than any other number, 31,522. If you tally up all of these letters, you'll end up, of course, with the number that we came up with, 304,805 letters, uh, a mixture of these various letters. Okay, so what do we have next? Let's do the math. If Aleph equals three, and there's 27,057 Alephs, well then, because the Aleph has a combination of three different letters, on this level, where you're counting not just the letters themselves, but also the composite letters, you end up with 81,000 letters uh, for all the Alephs. And the base, of course, it's got a resh over there. See, it's got a resh, and then above on the bottom. So the 16,344 bases in the Torah, on this level, if you tally up not just the letters, but the letters that make up the letters, 
you end up with 32,688, and so on. A gimel is a vav and a little yud on the bottom. So there's two of them. So for every gimel, you have really two composite letters, and that gives us this number times two. And then dalid, it's a vav and a vav, and a vav, and a vav it's two also, and that gives us this number. And then the hay is a dalid, a little yud, and that gives us this number. A vav is not a composite letter. And therefore, the 30,509 vavs in the Torah, even if you do the composite version of it, it's only 30,509, and so on. Zayin, ches, tes, yud. Uh, the shin, for example, if you look at how a Torah spells a shin, it, these three things come to a point. So you have a vav, and then another vav, and then a zayin in the middle. That gives us this number times three. And this is a ratio an upside down vav. So this number times two, and so on. Everyone's getting the drift, understanding how the math works. So what happens if we take all the letters in the Torah and we try to understand how many letters make up that given letter, the composite letters, and then we lay out how many times these letters appear in the Torah, and then we take the number and we multiply it by how many letters make up those letters. What do you think the bottom number is? But the bottom line number is, uh, wow, we are pretty close. 599,990. If, if this is all we got, we'd say, you know what? That's close enough. <laughs> yeah, we're well, within striking distance. This is kind of like 600,000. You're only 10 short. Maybe we could stop here. So I'll tell you, this is still a, a, a work in progress. I don't, uh, you know, there may be other answers to this question, but it's kind of fascinating that our sages tell us that some letters are made up of other letters. And then when we do the math, we try to figure out, you know, which letters are made up, made up of which, and then we multiply it and figure out how many letters are on the Torah. We end up to a number that is so close to 600,000. But anyhow, I, I figured, let's try to figure out, let, let's figure out those extra 10 letters. How do we get another, another 10 letters? So here's my suggestion. This is a picture of a Torah scroll. And I'm, I selected a picture from the beginning. This is actually the very beginning of the Torah. This is the first words of the Torah. Bereshis, bara, elokim, es ha-shamayim, ve'es ha-aretz, ve'aretz So, so you, if you've seen a Torah scroll, you know this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. Um, kind of the black upon the white and, and the way the letters are written. This is just, I pulled it off the internet. But you'll notice something a little bit unusual. You have here the base that kickstarts the Torah is actually much bigger than the rest of the letters that are next to it. And in fact, this is actually from chapter two of the Torah. These are the chronicles of heaven and earth, Bihibaram. If you look at that hay, you'll see that that hay is smaller than all the letters that are surrounding it. So it turns out that there are a bunch of letters that are written larger and a bunch of letters that are written smaller. So I made a list of all the letters that are bigger in the Torah. So like we just said, Bereshit, Baral, Kimish, Shemayim, Arts, Genesis 1, 1, you have a big base. Exodus 34, 7, you got a big Nun. Notzer, Chesed, Lalafim. This is talking about after the sin of the golden calf, Moshe is praying to God, and he's telling God that, God, you preserve kindness for thousands of generations. And here we have the reish. Ki lo elacher. The reish is big. Koholich al gachon. Any animal that travels on its belly, the vav of gachon is big. So I thought maybe, maybe we can make up the extra letters, maybe we can make up the extra letters by tallying up the amount of big letters and saying, you know what? Every time there's a big letter, that counts as another letter because the money tells you, okay, not just, don't just write this one letter, write it big. So you have the letter itself, and then you have the fact that it's amplified, that it's made bigger, and that itself constitutes another letter. And if we have 10 of those, well, maybe we have our solution, we have our resolution, we have our way to make up the missing letters. And I did a trick over here on you. I counted up the verses 
that have the extra letters. And if you see on the side over here, one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, ten. Oh my goodness, do we have an answer? There's ten verses in the Torah that contain big letters. And by the way, I gave you the verses where they appear in the Torah. You can actually look up on a Torah scroll. You'll find in many, many versions, by the way, of the Torah. So for example, I pull this one up over here. Uh, let's see. Go to the first word, word of the Torah. If you could see that, I don't know if you could see that, but the base is also bigger here. They, they, they actually incorporate it into the Chumash. And there's 10 verses, maybe we have an answer. But the reason why this is not good is because I tricked you. Why did I trick you? If you look at this verse of Deuteronomy 6, 4, it's maybe the most famous verse in the whole Torah. Shema Yisrael, Hashem HaKen Hashem Achad. It actually has two big letters. A big ayin and a big dalit. Oh no, there's 10 verses in the Torah that have big letters, but there's actually 11 big letters. So we had 599990. We needed 10 more letters and we got 11. What do we do? We're in big trouble. Okay, maybe this is a solution. This is a verse in Numbers. Chapter 25, verse 12. This is talking about Pinchas. Pinchas was one of the great heroes of Jewish history. There's a horrific sin happening, and Pinchas comes and says, I'm going to stop the sin. And he, in a fit of zealotry, he takes a sword and he goes in and he stabs the perpetrators. And the Talmud elaborates on the miracle, what happened. He stopped the plague, 24,000 people died. And then Pinchas, who is the grandson of Aaron, Pinchas is promoted to being a Kohen. And the, one of the verses that describe what happens, Lachain emar hinini no sin lo esbisi shalom. Because of Pinchas' heroism, behold, I am going to give him a covenant of peace. Now, if you look at a Torah scroll, you'll find something that appears exactly once in the Torah, exactly once. In the word shalom, the last word of the previous verse, he knows his greasy shalom. The last word actually has a vav that's cut in half. Actually, if you look at it in the Torah scroll, this appears only once in the Torah. It's a vav that is cut in half. I couldn't figure out how to do it on this particular thing, so I just made a line going across, but there is like a hole. And the Talmud tells us, why does it say the word shalom, which means peace, with a vav that is cut, out, cut in half? So bizarre. It appears only once in the Torah. Only once in the Torah is there a letter, the part of it's cut off. Normally, if you have a letter in the Torah that's cut off, well, it's, the Torah is invalid. And here, if you don't have it cut off, then you have a problem with your Torah. Your Torah scroll, Torah scroll is not complete. So that's the Talmud. Why is the word Shalom, spelled with a vav that is cut off. The reason why is because you're supposed to, you're supposed to ignore that letter. That letter vav, you have to delete it. And you have to read it as shalem. If you take out the word vav, if you take, if you take out the letter vav from the word shalom, you end up with shalem. Shalem means complete. And says the Talmud, what does it mean? that Pinchas is now made a Kohen. He's promoted, made a, he's made a Kohen. Previously, it was only Aaron and Aaron's four sons and the children, the sons that are born to them subsequently. Because Pinchas was already alive at the time of the coronation of the Kohanim, he was not included in the Kohanim. He was not a member of that, of that class. He was a regular Levite. But because of this act, he was made into a Kohen. However, he has to be Shalem. He has to be complete. Meaning, if you have a Kohen, a descendant of Pinchas, perhaps you may say, who is not complete, who has, let's say, missing, who's missing a, a limb, for example, something like that would not be valid, would not be, would not be uh, qualified to be a Kohen. So the Talmud here already says that there's a letter in the Torah that's cut in half, and you have to read it as if it is not included. So maybe we can speculate. This is, again, pure speculation, that in our tallying of the letters of the Torah, 
we have this vav, but it's not a real vav, because in fact, it's missing. It's missing a part of it. And it's not any other letter, because the Talmud says you're not supposed to count it. You're supposed to read it as shalem. And if you look at it, it doesn't look at any other letter. So it's not, it's not another, it's not, there's no other letters there. It's not, it's not a letter that you're supposed to, you're supposed to read it. It's, it's, in fact, you're supposed to ignore it. Maybe we could deduct this vav from our tally, and thus we have 599-990, and then we added 11, and now we're deducting one from the total, and we end up with precisely 600,000. I want to add another point. Our sages tell us that the name of this particular vav in the Torah is called vav kitia. It is a cut up vav. Kitia. In the Talmud, there is a personality. He fe he's featured in the book of Avodah Zarah, page ten b, and his name is. Kitia bar Shalom. Kitia, the son of Shalom. And this vav appears in the word Shalom, and it's called a vav Kitia. Now, this particular person in, 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 the, in the Torah or in the Talmud, he's a convert. He's a convert. He's someone who converts to Judaism. Our sages tell us that there are 600,000 Jews and 600,000 letters in the Torah. The inference of that is that every, every Jew is in effect represented by a letter of the Torah. But what about the people who become Jews but get grandfathered in because they weren't necessarily part of the Jewish people? They joined the, they joined the Jewish people. Maybe this vav is hinted or is hinting towards the people that can still join the 600,000 this is the letter that's left open, so to speak, for people who want to join the ship, people who want to convert and to be part of this fraternity. And when the Talmud says that this guy's name is Katia Bar Shalom, Katia, again, that's the exact name of this Vav. It's called the Vav Katia. And the word is Shalom. And he was a convert, a great hero who joined the Jewish people. Maybe what it's telling us is the 600,000, the Jewish people. And then there's this one other letter that's left open for people if they want to, to join, they can be grandfathered in as well. Let's go back to our original question. What does it say on the tablets? In Exodus we read, Zakar Tzema Shabbos Nakasho. In Deuteronomy we read, Shamar Tzema Shabbos Nakasho. The word Zakhar and the word Shamar are different words, right? Are they? Well, let's look at them closely. In Exodus, it says the word Zachar, Semer Shabbos Lakacho. In Deuteronomy, it says Shamar, Semer Shabbos Lakacho. These two words, how different are they? Well, let's look at the last two letters. The last two letters are identical. You've got a Vav and a Resh. A Vav and a Resh. They're the same letters. Okay, so we're halfway home. And then what do we have? We have Shamar. What is the word Shamar? So we told, we told you, we spoke about this already. Letters are composite letters. And the word, or the letter shin, actually has a zion in it. You see the zion? That's actually here. Oh, my goodness. A shin has got a zion in it, a zion and a zion, and then above. So the letter shin already has a zion subsumed within it. The word, the letter mem, is a chaf, this chaf, with above appendage to it. So if I write the word shamar, of course, on a simple level, it has the word shamar. That's it. Guard, observe the Shabbos. But when we take apart letters and understand that they are composite letters, then the word shamar also spells zachar because within the shin is a zayin and within the mem is a chaf. That's my presentation. Now, I think uh, there's a very powerful lesson to us. First of all, it's kind of cool. The fact that we are told something outrageous in, in the Zohar. It's outrageous. The 600 letters. There's not 600,000 letters. You count them. The 304, the 805 letters. You're missing almost 300,000 letters. And of course, our instinct is to say, well, what do these rabbis know? They made a huge blunder. 
What do they know? They thought no one would have computers to count it. That's where that's where that's how we cynically process this idea. And then we read a little bit about maybe, well, maybe maybe there's something to it. Maybe there's something hidden, and we discover a powerful insight. There is six hundred thousand letters in the Torah, and every Jew, at the root of their soul, we have a connection to Torah. The sages tell us at the foot of Sinai, the Jewish people were united. One person with one soul. The Kabbalists tell us there's 600,000 souls coalesced around the mountain. That is the only way that they could unlock a Torah comprised of 600,000 letters. If there was one Jew that said, I'm not in, you would have had a Torah missing one letter. And if you have a Torah missing one letter, the entire Torah is invalidated. That's a very powerful insight, powerful lesson. We are on the doorstep of Sinai. We're going to get the Torah. And what do we have? We are told that every Jew is needed. Every Jew is vital. Every Jew is indispensable. Every Jew has a portion in Torah. Every Jew is represented in the 600,000 letters of the Torah. So that's that. That's my presentation. How do I get out of this? Go back down to screen share. Okay. I, I, oh, stop share. Here we go. Okay, it's good to see our space again. Any any questions from the